My dear nephew, you grew up with my stories of space and the moon, but I have to confess there were some you were not ready to hear. You now hold in your hands a document given to me by a trusted source and a dear friend, a scientist who worked for the Pentagon. Enclosed are his notes. The information he documented is of the utmost importance to the future of our civilization. Greetings, Admiral. I read your resume, a couple of your papers, put two and two together and figured you out. There's no way you want to talk to me about my career or the Defense Intelligence Agency. Thank you for meeting with me. Our mutual friend let me know that you were a team player and you knew how to keep your mouth shut. He said you had no media connections and your references and clearances were excellent. It's difficult to contact our friend these days. Well, after his hospital visits, they've had to keep an eye on his stress levels. It's uh, hard to get any messages through. Wish we had more people like him. I remember a phone call I had with our friend back in 99. We talked for a long time, and I go way back in the Navy. He asked me to talk to you about some information I shared with another colleague back in 97. So when that colleague shared some information you didn't want out, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't smoke. He betrayed my personal and professional trust, particularly amongst the intelligence community and fellow naval officers. So he told that ufologist and reporter. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, the article comes out referencing you. We got calls from all over. Uh, what was the nature of these calls? Look. Mostly sarcastic, stupid jokes and comments. Comments of surprise and derision that I would be talking to nutty UFO groups and things of that nature. Whoa. Bitch. If you betray my trust, I'll deny this meeting. I'll deny everything said. I'll not meet with anyone else to discuss this topic. It is absurdly held subject matter. I've never seen anything like it in black program communities. Okay, then. What happened in 97? The general suggested that I go through the records group of the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Technology, OUSTAT. They told me of a special projects record group outside the regular special access programs, a special subset of the program set up in 94, not belonging to the regular SAP divisions. They're buried and covered by conventional SAPs. Did you see the budget information? I don't think those numbers would add up. I talked to someone who said they were two to three times over their budget there. And sometimes it went as high as six to seven times core budget. I thought it was extremely high. I know someone who wanted to investigate on that, but they were told to drop it. What special access program department did you work in? Core secret, won't tell. To code name? Again, I won't say core secrets. Who is the project contractor or the government agency that runs the program? An aerospace technology contractor, one of the top in the U.S. Who? Core secret, won't tell. What happened when you found this contractor? I made three calls with the program manager back in 97. One was a conference call with a security director and a corporate attorney. They were confused as to why I was looking for them. I didn't like their tone. I read their program record in the Austin Special Records Group. I asked about their crashed UFO program, what their role was in that, what they had and so forth. I'd asked if they heard of MJ-12 or some such organization. MJ-12? One might take you for a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> straight, straight to the point, they, I, I imagine they weren't happy. 
I called several programs before I found anyone with any answers. All the programs were in the same records group, but their connection was not obvious. So basically, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. So what happened after that? I wanted a formal briefing, a tour, and the rest. I used my regulatory authority as deputy director, assistant joint chiefs of staff at the time. I demanded that my not being brief was an oversight that needed to be corrected. They reluctantly agreed to meet me face to face. security director and a corporate attorney. They called themselves the Watch Committee. What were they watching? I asked. They were formed to protect themselves. You found us. They were vague. But what almost exposed them? Damn it, let me finish. They said years ago, an audit investigation led to them. It was a nasty back and forth between them, the investigator, and his Pentagon chief for program transparency. They said money was the issue, but then their hiding out became another issue. Evidently, some kind of threat was leveled to blow the lid off of it, so they decided to let him in to finish his job. Well, if they worked so hard to keep the program hidden, why would they actually let him in? Did they show him alien craft, hardware? They didn't say any more about it. After that episode, a formal agreement arose with the Pentagon Special Access Program Oversight Committee, SAPOC. No U.S. government official was to gain access unless they met the criteria administered by the contractor committee, regardless of the tickets or the position personnel possess. Literally, their way or the highway. I call that list the bigot list. The bigot list? It comes from the Normandy invasion back in World War II. Tickets to Gibraltar, to Gib, were reversed to bigot. You had to be at such a high level of trust to be included in the staging of the Normandy invasion that the ticket became synonymous with need to know. I asked for the criteria to be on the list and they refused to answer. I was angry because the implication was that they were operating without any oversight or any justification. That's a politically dangerous place to be. They were concerned about who I talked to in the Pentagon and elsewhere. So that was the purpose of your meeting. They were never gonna let you in the door, were they? Can I have one of those? <coughs> they said all my tickets were confirmed and valid. They still would not give me access to what was pertinent to the nature of their program. Then they gave me their bigot list to prove my access denial. Admiral, you do not need to know it was long and outdated, last updated in 93. Were there any names on the list you recognized? A handful of Pentagon people, corporate types, scientists, technicians, engineers, managers, and so forth. Uh, any military organizations? No, just Alstat people and a couple from SAPOC, one other Pentagon individual. Then what? It's OK to say it. Say what? They were a reverse engineering program. Started from something they recovered years ago. I thought they meant something Soviet or Chinese, like a, a missile, a intel platform, a aircraft. What was it? The program manager said that they had an intact craft they could fly through space, air, water, even dimensions. I asked if it was from overseas. They said, no, it can't be. Not possible. They didn't know where it came from exactly, but it did not come from this earth. It was not made by human hands. Did you believe them? What about the Roswell book? Why would the Army put out a story saying they captured a flying saucer just to retract it the next day? The photograph of the weather balloon? 
was the best example of a forced smile I've ever seen. I'd say the book. I didn't have time to read it. But that story, together with what I learned in that meeting, lead me to believe the author was telling the truth about having seen alien hardware and so forth. But can you share more about Roswell, the Holloman Air Force Base landing? The, what, the, the MJ-12 leaked documents, the Phoenix lights? No. no comment. I will admit I threatened to go to the SAPOC to complain and get access to their program. I just wouldn't budge. Did you complain about not being able to have access? I tried didn't matter. They knew there was nothing I could do. I was told to drop it as I didn't have purview over their program. That's when I confess I yelled back at them, even though I could have kept my mouth shut. Your colleague and the ufologist said you nearly got busted. Close to that. The senior review group chairman said if I didn't follow his suggestion, I would not see director DIA promotion, would not get early retirement, and would lose one or two stars along the way. Considering my position of trust at the Pentagon, I did have relevant regulatory and statutory authority over their program. What about the so-called alien abductions uh, being faked? No comment. What do you plan on doing with all this? Well, I'll keep this for private personal research and data collection. I'll track down the story and ascertain any noise in the media or government sources. I'll keep my mouth shut. Good.